Well, good morning, y'all, and welcome back to Apron Strings. Today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I've done it once before, but several people have asked me to do some more with the freeze dryer. And I was given a bag of a bunch of heads of cabbage and um, couldn't stand the thought of it going to waste. So I shared with friends and I made um, sauerkraut. That's where the sauerkraut cabbage came from that y'all will be seeing. And uh, I made, I decided that I would put it in the freeze dryer. And that way when I'm making homemade soup, I can just get a handful of the cabbage for flavor. Or I could, I can um, kind of stir fry it and use it that way. It'll be a little softer than if I had cut fresh cabbage when I reconstituted uh, or refresh it. But I'll have fresh cabbage. So I'm going to bring y'all over to the table. Troy always thinks of making things easier. And he got the little meat slicer out. And yesterday when I was making sauerkraut, I cut it with a knife. And let me just tell you, my hands got, my wrists got so tired. And um, he said, I think I can cut that with a meat slicer. So he's cutting it a perfect quarter or a little less of an inch slices, you know, and I'm straightening it apart to put on the trays to freeze dry. And, oh my goodness, it's so fast and so easy. So I'm going to bring y'all over to the table and let you watch a little bit of our shredding it and getting it on the trays and then we'll get it in the freeze dryer and it'll probably take 40 hours. For what Troy's doing, he's cutting the cabbage where I don't have to do it with a knife. Uh, he's doing it on the meat slicer. So I'm going to bring y'all over there close where you can see what he's doing. I'm getting it on this tray right here to go in the freeze dryer. Now, Okay, I'm going to uh, just leave, let the camera roll a little bit while I get some on the freeze dryer. I don't know if y'all could hear or not while I was over there with him cutting because sometimes it'll pick up one noise over the voice. But he's using our meat slicer and just weren't running the cabbage through and making the shreds a little bigger than a quarter of an inch, around a quarter of an inch. And then by the time they freeze dry, they'll be very small pieces of cabbage. This is a silicon mat that you can get from Harvest Right that uh, helps stuff not to stick. The cabbage isn't going to stick anyway, but I'm going to use it. So I'm just getting handfuls of the cabbage, hands full of the cabbage. I have my five trays loaded and I loaded them pretty good uh, and we're fixing to take them out there and get them on the freeze dryer Okay, the freeze dryers out here in our mud room and uh, that's it and it has five racks in there to put the trays on so Troy is just bringing them out here and getting them loaded and then we'll get it set and go in and we don't have to do anything else until the cycle is finished and it cuts off so we'll get the five trays in and um, get it cranked up and going. Okay, this is the little computer screen that's on the front of it. So it's going to freeze for nine hours. And then there's a 30-hour period in there that it will judge how much it needs to take of that time. And then we'll have a final drying time. So this is our freeze dryer. There's the little door pad that's in it and I'm sorry I don't have any room to get away from it to, to get a better picture because it's just this little room is very crowded out here. Okay the freeze dryer likes 13 minutes being through uh, with the cabbage so I've got my oxygen absorbers and I keep that sealed until I'm ready to drop one in each of my half gallon jars. I'm not sure I may have to use a quart in addition to 
And this big funnel is so handy when you're pouring everything in, it doesn't get all over the counter. So I've got that ready. I've got the Backmaster ready. It's set to, we'll just lay the jars in there and it'll vacuum them just wonderfully and it'll keep for ages. So we use the Chef's Choice 615A to slice the cabbage. And we'll be using the Vac Master VP215 uh, to vacuum seal it. And it is freeze drying on a Harvest Right large freeze dryer. Okay, I've got one, two, there's the third one, the fourth one, and the fifth one. And the cabbage is just, listen, well, let me see if you can hear it. You probably can't hear it, but it's, it's very dry. And then when I start to rehydrate it, just put it in a little water and toss it. Keep adding a little bit of water to it until it rehydrates. So we're fixing to get it in the jars, and I will bring y'all back and show you the next step. Okay, we got two half gallons and two quarts. Y'all, I'm so thankful to have this freeze-dried cabbage that I can put on my shelf. Now, probably what I will use this for is just open it and get me a cup or so and put in a pot of homemade soup or stew. Um, I may rehydrate some of it to try to do a cabbage dish. I can make a casserole with it because it'll rehydrate really well. I'm just glad to have it. I'm going to try to get some cilantro and parsley and uh, get a freeze because you know, we can get cilantro three bunches for a dollar and the parsley, the flat leaf parsley, is not a whole lot more than that. So I'm going to do some parsley and uh, cilantro. If y'all want me to bring you along, comment below and I'll let you see how that turns out. But, uh, you know, I do can in several different ways. Some things I freeze. I prefer my purple hull and cream peas, butter beans, to be uh, put in the freezer. But when I, when I put them up, I shell them and I don't wash them. And I just put them in Ziploc bags and put them in the freezer. Now, my husband had an aunt, <clears throat> and she put them in a pillowcase. And would twist it closed and set it in the freezer. I blanched everything until we went to Aunt Adeline's, and she told me, you don't have to blanch that stuff. And my cream style corn, I used to just hold my breath when I had scraped it off the cob and was blanching it, because it scorched so easily. You don't have to do that. I scrape it off the cob, put it in the bags and freeze it, bring it out when I get ready to cook it. I like green beans best of all if they're canned, pressure canned in jars. But I have quite a few that I have freeze dried just to have. Get a handful, put in my soup, put this on the vac master and reseal it. Um, and then, you know, I freeze dry it, I dehydrate some things. Uh, my fruit slices that I uh, dehydrate, that I want to put in my tea, preserve to put in my tea, I would rather have those dehydrated. If I put them in the freeze dryer, they snap and break easily, like a little piece of styrofoam. And uh, it's easy to break them when you got them in your, and then you got that stuff all among your tea. So I really prefer the harder uh, dehydrated fruit slices to put into my tea to rehydrate and use. But now you can dehydrate, you can freeze dry it and make powder out of it. So there's pros and cons both ways, but I have my preferences on different things. And before I got my freeze dryer, I did uh, cabbage on the dehydrator and it worked out perfectly. It's a, it turns darker than it does uh, to freeze dry it, but it does work. So, you know, if a freeze dryer is not something that's in your future, get you a dehydrator and uh, put you some stuff up dehydrating. There's a woman that I really like to watch, and it was, oh man, what is the name of her channel? I'll have to look her up. But she dehydrates a whole lot, and she's got lots of videos on, on reusing the dehydrated 
uh, food, and I enjoyed watching her and learning from her. Now, if you think, I can't afford one, two of my Excalibur dehydrators came from um, a resale site. If you'll watch Craigslist and your things like that where they list people are selling used things, people get all hyped up about something and then they're not interested in it anymore and they get that out of their way. That's when you get a bargain. You might find you a good pressure canner on Craigslist or whatever that thing is in your area. Uh, there's a lot of bargains to be found. If you can't afford to get it brand new, watch Goodwill, watch your thrift shops, and watch the resale markets online, and you can get a good deal on what you need to put some food up for your family. I hope y'all are having a really good day today. The sun's shining, and that, makes, that just makes things happy. The good Lord bless y'all. Come back in a few days, and we'll have something else good.